Those time-based ACLs we worked with near the end of the ACL section, fantastic tool. The thing is though, if the routers involved don't have a synchronized time and don't have synchronized dates, then your ACL is unlikely to work as, it, as we had planned. Because what happened here, we had one router that was allowing Telnet access Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Beautiful thing. Problem is, this router thinks it's Saturday. And if it's actually Tuesday and another router knows that, the ra that router, if we're trying to tell it from there, says, hey, you know, hey, it's Tuesday, you know, 9 to 5, let me in. And, of course, if it's Saturday, the router on the right, the one allowing Telnet, is uh, not allowing Telnet. It doesn't matter what time it is because we had tied that down to Monday through Friday. So that's a small problem that can come in when we don't have time synchronization. What are some of the bigger ones? Well, for one thing, our syslog timestamps really need to be accurate and have synced time throughout the network. And you may not have been through something like this yet, and I'm going to show you the syslog timestamps or the console timestamp messages in this video because what I've done in previous videos is left the timestamps out. I turned them off because I wanted us to be able to concentrate on the message. The timestamps can get pretty long, but I'm going to run them in this particular video and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Because what we want, if you take the logs from two different routers and you're trying to compare, you know, okay, this event happened on router two, then this happened on router three, well, you can do that if the time is synchronized. But again, if router two in that situation thinks it's two o'clock in the morning on Tuesday when such and such happened, and then router three, you know, it's Friday morning at 3 a.m., then you're going to have a lot of problem troubleshooting. It makes it a lot less frustrating. But on a more official layer manner, then sync time is critical for our digital certificate operation. They're not going to work unless the routers are synced. There are many other security and accounting features that rely on synchronized time throughout the network. So having synced time in our network is not a luxury. It is a necessity. And that's what the network time protocol is all about. It's a simple protocol. It was developed decades ago with very few changes since then. And what it does, it allows us to specify time sources for our network devices, whether that time source be another device in our network, our internal network, say a router or a multi-layer switch, or it could be a time source outside of our network. And in real world networking, you're usually going to have a combination of that because you'll have one device, a perimeter router, where all your traffic that's going out to the internet goes out through that particular router. That router is probably getting its official time from another device. And then we configure the network so once that router has the correct time from an outside source, all the other routers in our network are getting it from an inside source. You'll see what I'm talking about when we go through a couple of labs. Now NTP is set up as a hierarchy. It's really a pyramid and somebody's got to be at the top of the pyramid and those are our stratum zero devices. Now it sounds like something radioactive but it simply means that our device, these are the devices at the top of the hierarchy because that number in stratum zero refers to the number of hops or layers away from the top a particular device is. And if it's stratum zero, it's zero hops away from the top, it is the top. These are typically atomic clocks, and you cannot configure a Cisco router or device to get its time directly from a Stratum Zero server. Now, let me show you what one of those looks like, actually. Hold on. Now, these, uh, these, are, not, <laughs> these are not Stratum Zero clocks. These are just clocks. And, you know, there are some attractive ones there, and, you know, some, one of the classic alarm clocks. But these are not atomic clocks. This, this is an atomic clock. Let me see if I can make that a little bigger. There we go. This is the atomic clock, the alternate master clock, actually, at the United States Naval Observatory at Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado. And this is actually an NTP Stratum Zero server. And this is the alternate master clock. You don't want to see what the real one looks like or the main one. But I think you can see this has a little more horsepower than your average Cisco router or switch. So this is the kind of device we're talking about at the top of the NTP hierarchy. Now, as far as that goes, where can we get our time? Well, again, I've got a reminder here. We're talking about the number in stratum being the number of hops away the device is from stratum zero. It is not an indicator of reliability. We're not saying that stratum five is twice as reliable as stratum 10, anything like that. It's simply the number of hops. 
Now, Stratum 1 servers are usually called time servers, sometimes authoritative time servers, and we can configure a Cisco router to get its time from a Stratum 1 device. That's usually what you're going to do with your outside router, because it is strongly recommended that your network's outside router get its time from a public NTP time server. Now, for the latest IP addresses of those servers, you can run a term on public NTP servers, authoritative servers, something like that and get a full list. It's not something you need to do for the exam, but if you want to do it for lab purposes, beautiful. And here's a port you should watch out for. Be sure not to block, block UDP port 123 uh, on really any of the routers in your network, or be careful when you do, because that is the port NTP uses. And if you're shutting down a bunch of ports and you do that one accidentally, you forget you know, to allow it, then all of a sudden your time is going to become unsynced. Now there are several different types of relationships we can set up in our network with NTP. We can set up the classic server-client relationship, or we can make routers peers. We can make our devices peers. We can also depend on NTP broadcasts, where say the NTP server is just broadcasting the NTP messages and saying, hey, hope the right, hope the right devices get these. And it's up to you and I, the network admins, to make sure that it happens. The first type of NTP relationship we're going to look at and then configure is a server-client relationship. It's exactly what you'd expect. The server gives the correct time to the clients. You know, not exactly rocket science there. Now the clients take the time sync message from the server, they set their internal clock accordingly, and clients do not send NTP time sync messages back to the server. We're going to do a lab on that in just a moment. But just want to show you the NTP peer relationship. If we set one of these up, the two devices involved are sending NTP messages to each other. It's a fair exchange of ideas there. And either peer can send time sync messages to the other. So it looks a little something like this. You know, first we had our NTP server in this illustration. It's a multi-layer switch. That is our master. That's the actual command. It sends the time to an NTP client. You can then make that client a peer of another router and they're going to exchange two-way time sync messages. So that's actually what we're going to configure. We're going to use our routers one, two, and three, but we're going to configure something very much like this. And we are going to start with making router one our NTP server and router two is going to be its only client. We're going to bring router three in a little bit later, but at the beginning of the very next video, coming up next, we'll get started with our NTP config.